Welcome to the Deep Post Sports Chat. I'm sports editor Drew Rubenstein, and I'm with Kristen Kerlick. And Kristen, we're getting ready to start week two of the prep football season. Uh, Morgantown University and Clay Battelle all got off to nice starts in week one. And, and let's start right there. Uh, wh which team was most impressive in the opening weekend of prep football season? You know, I'd have to go with Morgantown um, coming out of week one. Reason being, um, obviously, several of the teams won pretty big in week one. But Morgantown, um, I talked to head coach John Bowers yesterday, and um, he was honestly pretty thrilled with how the Mohegans looked in the first week. Normally, a team uh, comes out of that first win, and, and they're happy to get a win, but they still have, you know, as he said, about 100 things they want to work on. Really, he didn't see that. He said, you know, his whole team from starters down through his second, third, fourth string looked pretty solid in week one. And what one interesting part of that, too, I think, is probably the wrinkles that Morgantown High still had. Uh, one thing that I think jumps out of the box score is Stone Wolfley didn't have a catch in that game, but his, his presence was still felt in week one, right? Right. Um, Stone did not have a catch, and, and I asked uh, Coach Bowers about that as well, and he said, you know, when they call a pass play, Stone's number is always on the list, but he is uh, he draws attention right and when when they did call those plays there were about three defenders covering him which opened up some options to throw to some of the fullbacks uh, Logan Compton had a couple catches as a result Logan Hatch and um, though Stone didn't get any of those catches in week one he he will be in the upcoming weeks and he did still impact the game defensively he had a couple sacks he had about 10 or 12 tackles a couple batted passes so he's still um, definitely an impact for the Mohegans whether or not he catches the ball was it a similar story now going to University High with with Tony Richardson I know he had a couple catches but still um, coming out of preseason Tony like Stone was was one of the guys uh, that, that we talked a lot out of uh, for the Hawks just because of the athleticism that he has and what he can bring from a variety of positions on offense. Um, similar type of thing for Tony? Definitely. Tony had two catches, I believe, in week one. And um, honestly, he made his presence felt defensively as well. I think in the very first, the very first drive of the game, Lewis County has the ball. And within the first five plays, Tony had two tackles for loss and kind of set the tone in that game defensively coming off the end. Um, again, he will get his catches. Um, but you know whether or not he does, he, he is setting the tone for the Hawks. Okay, and, and Morgantown's back at home this week against Calvin Coolidge. University High will be making its home debut against Buckhannon Upshur. Um, Clay Battelle still, still on the road before they get a break in their new stadium for one more week. But how did uh, week one go in terms of implementing their, their hurry up and spread offense? You know, Clay Battelle is another team that um, was kind of a toss-up about who looked most impressive between them and Morgantown because Clay Battelle also um, looked very efficient in week mm -hmm. one. That, that offensive firepower that they have was just as good as it was expected to be. Um, quarterback Tristan Hott threw five touchdown passes in the first week to four different receivers. Um, that, that offense is... Is, is clicking, seems to be clicking on all cylinders, and I think we can expect a similar sort of uh, result from them this week. So the CBs play at Allegheny Clarion Valley of Pennsylvania, and it sounds like you're expecting the CBs to probably return to their home stadium with a, an unblemished record then? Yeah, I, I think that would be a safe <laughs> assumption. Okay, now in the last one, Preston. Preston went to Hampshire in week one, uh, suffered a defeat. The Trojans may end up proving to be a, a borderline playoff team, so time will tell what exactly that loss uh, means to Preston. But they, they return home uh, to play a Lewis County team that still, it seems like they have some pieces as well, um, um, fell to the Hawks in week one. But uh, Preston kind of went into week one unsure about who its starting quarterback would be. It seems like maybe they've figured things out there. You know, I couldn't say for sure. There's nothing that says this is... Uh this is for sure, but uh, Scott Stone did take every uh, take every rep in week one. He, th he made 24 pass attempts, uh, which is slightly unusual for a Preston team mm -hmm. that typically runs the ball, uses a lot of power game. Um, and that might play into their advantage in week two because Lewis County did have some trouble defending the pass against the university. So Preston may be able to use that and use some of the uh, quick wide receivers that Coach Tennant has been kind of talking up during the uh, off season. So it seems to play to their strengths, and they yes. have a lot of the skill guys. And yeah, and they um, Preston is is definitely looking to rely on some of their some of their receivers, some of their speed this year. So 
that might be a help for them in week two. Very good. Kristen, you'll be at Morgantown High on Friday night, is that right? I will be. Okay, very good. Thanks for joining us this week. Um, please continue to check ddpost.com for all the latest sports uh, videos, and uh, we'll be back next week to preview week three of the prep football season. Thanks a lot.